In this video, I'm going to do a little ripping off of one of my good buddies. Nick Nimmin is one of my uh, guest expert partners on my Screencast Pro site with Joey Soto, and Nick just does a fabulous job of videos. So here is a video that I grabbed from Nick, and I'm just going to go ahead and let him talk just a little bit. We're going to see an effect here. I put together a list of things that you can do to stay in touch. Number one, include a call to action that encourages connection. On YouTube, we do this most... Boom. So essentially, this box drops down and kind of wobbles back up. And the purpose of his video here is like top 10 list of things to do. So he's talking about tip number one, then boom. So this is his, the title for the tip that he's going to give right and using something like this is a great way to break up your content especially if you're doing like a top 10 or top 3 or top 5 list kind of video great content right and I just thought this was an awesome little asset and he uses it then consistently every time he talks about a tip this little box drops down uh, as he gets started with it as he introduces the tip see there it is Tip number two, email contact. Send viewers email updates. And as I kind of, I'm going to zoom in here, and as I kind of scrub through this, we'll kind of watch the effect in action. So let's back this up a bit. So here it comes. It comes down uh, and then kind of comes back up a little bit, almost in an elastic kind of way. And watch the background. The background is actually a piece of moving video, okay? So it has this like visual interest in there, but it's subtle because it's all blurry, right? So I thought, what the heck? I think we can kind of replicate this right inside of Camtasia. So let's take a quick stab at how we might do such a thing. So I basically am just going to start with a few simple shapes. So I'm just going to basically start with a simple rectangle shape. And if I go to the visual properties, see that I've added some opacity to it. In other words, whatever's underneath is going to kind of show through a little bit, like it kind of did in Nick's portion. And we'll see what that looks like in a second. On top of that, I'm just going to add a couple of text boxes, right? And for these, I'm using a nice bold font. I happen to be using the Bebus font. You can Google search that and find it, uh, but it's a nice bold font. You could use Impact or Arial Black or any other nice looking clean font without any serifs uh, in general is what I do. Uh, but you can see I'm just kind of layering up a couple of objects here. Now, here's the problem that we're going to run into if we try to animate all of this to drop down from the top. And that is, as individual elements here, I'd have to animate each one individually. But here's kind of some secret sauce that not a lot of people know about. So all I did here was I have my simple rectangle, I have my text, and my text, and I grouped them. You can group things together by just clicking. I'm going to use my control key and select multiple items, right click, and then group. Okay, so that's basically how I created this group right here. Now, the cool thing about groups is that I can animate them all at once by animating the group. So if we kind of watch what I've done here, here are all of my items and if I scroll out you'll see that they all start up at the very tippy top here. So I created my group, grouped them together, and then put everything to start up at the top. Okay, so let's kind of move forward here and I'll scrub through and all I did was I added an animation to move them from the top down and then have it move just up a little bit so I get that drop down and kind of bounce back up type of effect. So let's just kind of let that roll. 
right? And I can kind of play with the timings here and things to make that like bounce effect even a little better. Uh, in fact, I have a sound effect that is just kind of like a, you know, a boosh kind of a thing that I probably would drop in as it hits the bottom, right? Uh, just kind of an interesting little piece. But the secret sauce there is that by animating them as a group, uh, it's so much easier than trying to animate things as individual items. Okay, so be aware that groups can help us kind of get around some of that work and effort. All right, so now the next thing I want to kind of recreate is this nifty background blur video. Okay, now in Camtasia, I actually have a bunch of background clips and things like that already going on. So let's kind of build some of that and then we'll drop our grouped animation on top. Here, this particular video clip is actually from the Camtasia library. And what is it? It is called Calling Lights. So if we go to the themes, Calling Lights, and I'll preview this. It's just the animated title that comes with Camtasia library. So I just dropped it on the timeline and deleted the text that comes with it, right? So I didn't want the text. All I want is the animated background. You notice it's a little bit harsh and the effect that Nick uses is to kind of have this blurry. So on top of this, we're just going to go to callouts and add a callout and we're going to use the blur callout, which is this guy right here. And take the fades off, so we don't need those. Then we'll just make it cover the entire video clip. And you'll notice right off the bat that things start to get a little bit blurrier. But to kind of pull this particular effect off, I might even want to increase uh, the intensity. You know, so play with this. It depends on which background video you choose to use, how much blur you might want to use. So I just kind of preview it a little bit and see what's what. So if that looks uh, kind of good, then at that point, I'll put the blur on top of the video clip and put my group of animated text on top of that. And I'll probably have them start pretty close together. Uh, so in this case, let's move these to start pretty quick. There we go. And now I can kind of go like that, and we'll t try to time this up a little, right? So I can use this multiple times uh, by just copying and pasting the group, and then each time just go double-click on the text, and modify it to be my next tip. Cool, so let's let that roll a second. Okay, and I can have that last as long as I need it to, that I'm talking about the particular point before I move into actually explaining it, and everything just kind of disappears. So we don't really transition stuff out of there. Uh, it just does like a jump cut into the content. We don't have to worry about animating stuff out. We animate the thing in, talk about our point, and it's time to show it. It just jumps to the next piece. Now, you could, like, fade it out or something, but I don't know. Jump cuts are, are pretty effective. I think that's what Nick does. Let's take a look, see if I'm missing something. So there it comes in. Okay, do you notice that? He doesn't do any weird exit animations or anything like that. It just, boom, skippy moves to the content. So nice little trick, nice little tip, something that you might not have known about grouping. And there you go. We kind of end up with a neat little asset. So if I wanted to shorten this, uh, don't forget that what you want to do is work with the group itself. If you have the group expanded, then you try to change one of these elements. Well, 
you know, it's going to change them all. So to change duration, make sure that you collapse the group, and now I'm good to go to change the ending, the duration, right? And to modify the text, just click the plus button to expand the group, double click on each item, and then move the playhead till you can see the text and modify away. Okay? Alrighty.